Hello guys, welcome to another video. Let's keep talking about generics and in this video we will talk about protocols with associated types and also we will answer how to use this kind of protocols especially when you see this error in the screen. Let's work on that. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. In a previous video, we talked about UI view representable and we talked that this particular thing is a protocol called forming view, but also containing something called associated type. This probably was confusing for you, but don't worry, today we will explain in detail why we need associated type, how to build them. Let's start. All right, let's answer first, what are associated types? Well, basically the definition says that are placeholder names under or protocols. It's kind of another way to use generics, but for protocols. You could see associated types has a way to specify that there should be a type of any concrete type, but we don't care about that. The type conforming the protocol will care. However, let's see first how to build a generic protocol. Is that possible in Swift? Let's see it. Let's bring back our classic protocol stack just because it's really easy to you to show you all the functionalities related to this. We will use count, push and pop. Okay, pretty nice. We have a protocol stack, but it's only working with ints. Let's transform this in a generic then. Whoa, what happened? Yeah, this is not possible in Swift. You cannot create a generic like a concrete type. This is not possible for protocols. So as the error is suggesting, we need to use an associated type. It's really easy. Let's fix this. What we're going to do is actually use a keyword associated type and then we will specify the placeholder type, like you did it with your generics in the type parameter with the brackets. It's basically the same. So let's use associated type called element. We don't know nothing about this type. This is a placeholder again, and the concrete type will do the rest for us. Then the only thing we need to do is replace element in the actual int values because we want this to be a generic. And that's it, pretty straightforward. Let's try this and create a stack of ints. Once we are confirming the stack, we receive this error from Xcode, so let's use the fix button. As you already saw in other videos, we got this type alias. In this case, making reference to this associated type, element. So the thing here is just fill what is the concrete type in order to Swift understand how to fill this type and this one. So let's use int in this case. There you go. And now let's fix this issue again. This will bring us the required methods for the protocol. There you go. Now let's create a private array just to store the content of this stack. And fill the operations. Let's implement push first. It's real simple. It's just values that append and then pass the value, in this case, element. There you go. Now with pop, it's also really simple. It's just values that pop last. Now, one really cool thing about associated types is that is it just a kind of clue that Swift needs in order to fill the pieces to compile this? What I mean is that we need to provide a concrete type here, right? Because Swift is asking us, okay, what is the type of element? I don't know nothing. In this case, we are specifying that is int, okay? So once we receive the other error message and the fix button, Xcode is how to complete it the rest of code, because we already know that we are talking about int, 
because this element is replaced with this associated type. But if we actually remove this, it's still working. Yeah, we cannot see any error. This is happening because Swift is inferring that in this case, since that the declaration of this is talking about element and we are using int here and here, then Swift can figure out that element is an int. This is pretty cool, right? So yeah, let me show you something. I will declare a float here. And we got an error because yeah, element is having two types at this point. So yeah, Swift is, is asking, okay, what is the actual type? Is float or is int? But if we specify that is int, yeah, the each is gone. Everything fit the requirement. This is awesome. This is the power of generics and power of type inference in Swift. Finally, let's just try it out. Let's insert some elements. Let's insert one, two, three. Oh yeah, we forgot that count is not properly working because it's a read-only value and a computer property in this case. So let's return the values that count. There you go. Now let's continue. Pretty cool. We have now our three numbers in the stack. We saw previously that we cannot create a generic protocol in the way like a concrete type. But is it possible to create a generic type using a protocol with an associated type? Actually, yes. Let's see that in action. Let's create a generic type of our int stack. But in this case, instead of just int, we will use any type and we will conform a stack protocol. Let's see that in action. First, we are confirming stack and then we receive again the error from Xcode. Let's fix it. And again, we need to provide to Swift what is the actual meaning of element. In this case, let's use a generic type. So let's put this in brackets and put something like item because I don't want to, you know, confused with element. Then we just need to say, okay, for this particular concrete type, I want to use my placeholder type item has the element for the stack. And that's it. Now let's fix this. There you go. Xcode is auto completing the element type with item, which is great. So again, we don't need this anymore. And we can again fill everything, but now using generics, let's bring back our private array of values. In this case, of course, let's use item as the type. Let's use values dot happen and insert the element. And then use value pop last. And remember to set this count value and return values dot count. Pretty cool. Now we have our stack, but now using a generic type and a protocol with an associated type. This is awesome. This combination could become so convenient because in real life, we need to use all the tools that Swift provides to us to make great apps. So yeah, this is awesome. So let's try this now that we have any possibility with any type to fill here. Let's create two types of arrays, one for ints and one for strings. Remember to specify the concrete type in the declaration, in this case, int. And now let's use a stack of strings. As you can see, we have the three elements ints here. Let's see now string. There you go. We have hello world, everybody. Awesome. Like generics, we can work with extensions. And since that we are talking about protocols, 
of course we can use an extension to confirm a protocol. But in this case, let's extend array and confirm array to a stack protocol. Let's see what happened. All right, so let's fix this issue. And there you go. Okay, couple of things just happened here. One of them is that this time we didn't require to set up type alias with element. Why? Well, if we go back here, in the previous video, I told you that it's really important to specify the type parameter name. In this case, it's element. And if you remember, we just named the associated type with element. Okay, so in other words, Swift is inferring that, okay, both types are basically talking each other. So the element from array is inferred has the same element from the stack. This is really convenient because as you notice here, we already just need to specify push and pop, which are the only methods that we need to implement here because we, we don't know nothing about this information, but the rest is already done. Also count, since that we have count in array, and it's basically the same requirement from stack, we are good to go. We don't need to do anything. If someone transforms your array into a stack or use your array as a stack, you don't have to worry about it. It's just implement push and pop and that's it. The rest is completely understandable for Swift. This is awesome. Let's then complete this implementation. Let's use self that happened and then element. And then let's do the same with array for pop. Self.pop array. Pop lat, sorry. Yeah, this is awesome. So, yeah, that's why in the previous video I mentioned that it's really important this name. It's not arbitrary. So, yeah, you can use whatever you want. But if you try to follow some uh, guidance about, you know, naming element or wrapper or in just a few small cases, name it with T or U or, uh, you know, just a letter. But in general, it's much better for you to name it properly, like this case. Pretty cool, right? At the end of the last episode, we saw an issue, a really common issue that most developers in Swift don't understand, or well, not most, but a lot of them, which is this one. You know, try to use a protocol as a regular protocol when it's talking about a protocol with an associated type. There is a big difference here. When you use a protocol regularly, you, you can use it as a type. But in this case, it's not possible to use it right away, like this example. Because you already have an associated type element in this particular example. So you need to inform to Swift, what is that element? Swift cannot infer that for you. There is not enough information for that. And for that reason, you cannot use it explicitly as a type. However, you can, like the suggestion, use this as a generic constraint. So if you remember also in the last episode about type constraint, you can specify some rules or to subset your types instead of using all the universe of types you can just set a very specific subset and then work with that inside your code that's the idea with protocols with associated type are special protocols so to fix this really simple is just using again as a constraint so let's create a new placeholder type here called um you know uh, structure or you know let's call it container because you know a stack is a container, so. And then here, specify that container is actually, well, or we need to constrain this to stack only. And then we can use this container type here and rename this because, well, to give more sense to this. When you have protocols with associated type, this is the right way to use it. That's the same case for views in SwiftUI. You cannot declare a view or a type with a view protocol immediately. You need to specify view as a constraint in a generic context. Think about that when you use these kind of things. So what do you think about protocols with associated types? Let me know in the comments. I would like to know your opinion and how to use those 
tools in your development. That's it for this video, but in the next one, we will finish, at least for now, the topic about generics and we will talk about where clause because it's something really important, especially if you combine generics and protocols with associated types. If this video was useful for you, don't forget to leave your like and subscribe for more content every week. That's it for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.